The world is ill. You have everything to lose through its sickness, loss, change, chaos. Your own blood will rebel against you. Your own herd, your own loved ones. Do not believe that just because you've had hundreds of years on this earth, you'll be, you'll be exempt. Welcome everyone and happy Friday the 13th. We are Vorpal Tales and we present a plethora of terrifying tales and awesome adventures for your viewing pleasures. I am Dwayne. You can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi and I will be your storyteller for this tale. Uh, this evening we will be continuing the con we will be presenting the continuation of season two of the Contagion Chronicle, No Time for Reality. If you guys love Vorpal Tales as much as I do, make sure that you guys seek us out on the internet. Don't forget to follow us here on Twitch. Check out our archives on YouTube. Make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell. Make sure you visit our webpage, VorpalTales.com, that has links to all of our social media, our Discord, and our Patreon. Check out our calendar to ensure you don't miss any of your favorite shows with lots of changes coming up at the end of this month and the next month. If you guys are looking to increase your RPG and dice repertoire, make sure you check out our affiliate link on our website, where you can see awesome products from Hitpoint Press, QU Empire, and Jim Hammer and Sons. And if you want to make Vorpal Tales a part of your life, make sure that you guys check out our merch store. Get all those cool coffee mugs, aprons, and t-shirts. Shout out tonight, go to Astral Tabletop for the virtual gaming space that we will be playing with and where the music will fill your ear holes. Thank you to Onyx Path and White Wolf for the world of darkness that they have built and for always supporting their players. Much love goes to N8 Mid for the custom character sheets that you too can use if you use Astral Tabletop. The music that was brought to you in the Terrifying Tales Starting Soon theme is brought to you by Dark Somnium Music. Our hearts go to Lovey Rebellion, a nonprofit group that empowers marginalized groups through the arts. Make sure that you guys check out their website, loveyourrebellion.org. Super kudos go to all of our Patreons, from the Snicker Snacks to the Jabberwockies. You guys help keep pushing this project forward, and we love you for it. And last but not least, thank you to all of our viewers, subscribers, and our fans. Much love on this Friday the 13th day. Now, before we get started, let the players introduce yourselves. Tell everyone who you'll be playing and where you can be found on the interwebs. Hello, my name is <coughs> Rachel. I am Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere. And today I will be playing Irene, a Zeki Promethean. I am Tyler. Hello, Jack was online. I am playing Anki, our way overpowered mage. One of them. I was yeah. muted and I was trying to make sure. Hi, I'm Mare. <laughs> hello, I'm Mare. You can find me at Oh Hello Mare on Twitch and Twitter. Um, and today I will be playing Essie, your unfleshed Promethean. Hello, I'm Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at True Kisama. And today I will be Karo, the mummy. Hey, I'm Corey. Uh, aka Narf on the interwebs, and today I will be playing Kilowatt, the not so overpowered mage. And hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. And today, tonight, whatever time it is, um, <laughs> I will be playing Emma Rose, our resident changeling. Beautiful. Before we continue our story, allow Essie if I remember correctly, to regale us with the happenings of last session. Yes. Here we go. Hillowat peels off to go tend to the wards. It seems like something or someone is trying to find out more about us. The rest of us begin discussing how best to get into the Arachi facility. Perhaps Anki can teleport us in? Anki assures us he can do much, much more than that. We have the name of an employee who he summons. Elsewhere, someone is preparing their breakfast and getting ready for work. They walk across town. About 45 minutes later, a confused Asian male wanders in. I know this seems sudden and I don't even know why I'm here, but I had a dream about you, he says to Emma Rose. 
He introduces himself as Derek and immediately asks her out. Emma Rose hides her wedding ring, making him think she's available. While this is going on, Anki steals his employee badge. Derek starts asking Emma Rose what she's doing in the bar. He likes that she runs her own business and asks her to join him in a nearby park. Emma Rose turns him down, but gets him into a long discussion about his personal history. He does reveal that he thinks his work is for the benefit of all humanity. With that, Emma Rose draws more information out of him, particularly about Iris's case. He reveals things we don't know yet, like that Iris used to have violent, violent fits. But some kind of experimental antibody treatment seems to have resolved her issues. Shortly after, some of the doctors treating her disappeared. The conversation drifts to Emma Rose's daughter. Derek works with her and thinks highly of her talent. Emma Rose signals Anki that she's done, upon which Anki locks the badge into his own timeline, then rewrites time. Derek was never here, and Irene, Essie, and Caro have zero memory of witnessing this conversation. Iris asks if they're going to be superheroes today. Yes, but Iris isn't coming. Essie volunteers to stay behind and watch Iris. Caro leans over and whispers to Irene, asking if Essie is a person. Essie says she's not sure, but everyone overhears and insists Essie is a person. Irene agrees and says the real question is if she and Essie are humans with souls. Irene tries to describe the experience of being a Promethean and how she's pretty sure she used to be a human, but isn't sure what she is now. Caro finds this conversation interesting, whereupon Anki reveals Caro's true and full name. Caro does not react well to that and tells Anki to never say that name again. Anki responds by giving the exact number of how many people Caro has murdered. It's in the millions. She stalks off to her tomb. Essie asks Irene more questions about human souls and if she needs one. Irene does her best to explain the alchemical journey and how she can't really answer those questions for Essie. Essie will just have to go on her own personal journey. Iris interjects that this is boring old people talk. Irene shuts up and goes behind the bar cleaning. Emma Rose emerges from her own room after casting a glamour. She asks if they're ready to go and gets no response. Seeing Irene, she checks in. Irene says she's not sure if she's okay and points down the hall to where Caro is. Going to Caro's tomb, Caro starts talking about how she may have overdone things in the past. She's killed a lot of people, not out of anger, Anger doesn't drive her. Duty does. Duty to Unum Basek. Emma Rose doesn't fully buy that Caro isn't motivated by anger. Caro leaves, followed by Emma Rose. While this is going on, Anki wants to talk to Irene. The soul talk has clearly affected her. With Irene's permission, he reads a strand or two of her neon green hair and tells her the exact timeline which is likely to give her a soul. This overwhelms Irene, who needs to spend some time in her lead box, processing. On the other end of the bar, Essie struggles to learn how to draw. Apparently, drawing was never a part of her programming. Iris offers to draw a picture that Essie can color. It's time to go break into Arachi. Emma Rose whispers to Essie that if she can't come back with her daughter, she's not coming back. If that happens, will Essie take care of Iris? Essie agrees. The rest of us roll up to the polished, glassy front of Arachi. Anki casts a quick distraction spell as we swipe Derek's ID to get us inside the building. Emma Rose uses hostile takeover to assume control of the building. Thus, when we get into the elevator, it accepts Emma Rose's fingerprint. The ride down takes much longer than we'd expect a three floor elevator ride to take. It opens to a security desk. Caro tries to hide, but ends up drawing attention instead. Halt, he calls out, drawing an MP5, but thanks to Anki's magic, the bullet ricochets wildly, dropping him. Irene picks up his MP5, and while Emma Rose watches the security feeds. There are also quite a number of guards on this floor, and Irene describes how each one is armed. 
Anki uses Emeroza's hair to form a sympathetic connection to find the correct quadrant where Nadia might be. This seems to be a medical facility, and we can see various medical procedures. We stop to watch some technicians opening a hard silver case. There's an injection gun inside with multiple colored cartridges. The technician picks up the red one and injects a sedated man on the table. Nothing happens. Another technician pulls out a green cartridge. It seems almost like liquid fire. He injects the patient. Nothing happens at first, but then his muscle mass begins increasing, growing too large even for the table he's laying on. Irene senses Pyros. They're making another Promethean. Irene asks Emma Rose to open the door to the lab. As soon as Emma Rose does, Irene uses her stolen gun to murder all three technicians. The patient continues to transform, but still seems to be sedated. The rest of you can go, says Irene. I'll wait here. Anki, not wanting to leave her alone, decides to buy locate. Paro, Emma Rose, and one of the Ankis encounter another guard. He asks for an ID, and Caro responds by choking him out and stashing the body in a janitor's closet. As they continue through the hallways, they see that the experiments get darker and darker. Some of these patients, or subjects, look like they are severely disturbed. Some aren't even alive. They were tests done on, there were tests done on cadavers. <clears throat> Emma Rose checks each cadaver, glad to see none of them are her daughter. They come across another team, doing something similar to what they witnessed with injection guns and two subjects. This time, however, Anki senses contagion from the gun. It seems constrained in some way, and sad about it. Everyone watches the injection and the twisting and contorting that they do as a result of the experimentation. By the time the transformation is complete, the subjects have fused together and become a living or unliving weapon. Taro is fascinated and in awe of watching this happen. Meanwhile, back at the bar, Essie and Iris enjoy, enjoy drawing pictures together. Iris likes drawing flowers and her favorite color is rainbow. Iris is curious about Essie's existence as a Promethean and Essie talks about her past as a surveillance AI. Ideas of personhood on her mind, Essie asks Iris about her more pleasant dreams. She's never had dreams herself. Suddenly, her eyes go black and her voice drops about four octaves. But you dream about where you came from. You know your sister suffered. Are those not your dreams? And then Iris is back to being a kid again. Essie begins questioning Iris, upset that she seems to know about Essie's sisters. But Iris seems to have no awareness of what just happened. Essie start, or Iris starts talking about her imaginary friend, Sarah. And Essie says that Iris's imaginary friend is trying to take over Chicago. Sarah seems to bubble to the surface, giving Essie the chance to ask this manifestation of the contagion and what it wants. It reveals that its mother sent it here, but refused to say the name of its mother. Essie uses one of her Promethean powers to draw more, out of, draw more out of Sarah. It doesn't work. And even worse, Essie's tipped her hand. No, no, it says. Essie asks what Sarah is doing here, and she reveals that her mother was asked a favor by someone else. Sarah won't reveal who or what. Just as suddenly as she arrived, however, Sarah vanishes. Iris looks down at the picture of a giant black dog and starts crying. It's happening again, she says, as the, paint, as the paper spontaneously catches fire. The walls in the bar begin shaking as Essie hears crashing and clanging. Back in the lab, the new Promethean comes too. He rolls off the table and lands on one of the dead technicians. What, what happened to me? Iris, Irene tries to explain that he's been transformed and that she took revenge on his behalf. Anki says that he's not ready for what's about to happen and that he and Irene should leave. Agreeing, Irene begins leading the new Promethean, James, out of the building. That's when the living weapon breaks free of its constraints. Yep. <laughs> Beautiful.
So back at the bar, you had heard all of the crashing and clanging coming from the, the techno bar. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Said you're gonna die. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll try our best not to die. Kilowatt, <laughs> you were in your uh, your sanctum. Uh, finish, finishing up some some research as uh, some of your uh, electronics counter surveillance stuff was going off as it seemed that someone was trying to get past the barriers that you had conjured up uh, in the previous episode to mask your location. Yeah. <clears throat> and all the while, while you're checking up on all this, making sure that everything is, you know, your wards are are still good you start to hear the same like clanging and crashing coming from the bar proper area um it's almost as if someone had just like let a bowl inside a china shop walls are shaking hear glass clanging tables being smashed I'll probably uh, start running out that way, um, looking for I don't know weapons. Uh, assuming the worst, come uh, running into the. What's going on I... in here? Oh, was that Iris? <laughs> oh no, that that was <laughs> that was kilowatt. Kilowatt. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know. It's it just got loud over there. Um, and as I try and pull up my character sheet, I want to try and put together um, doing uh, the x-ray, my x-ray vision that's got three pyros and it has a roll, I believe. I step up. Iris is, is scarily clinging to your leg, grabbing at your, you know, grabbing at your pants. Uh, Mr. Floofs is just barking hysterically. Uh, Essie has sort of taken, has taken one of her arms and sort of just kind of pulling in Iris closer to her leg, sort of almost that slight shuffling behind her, at least away from the doors that would connect to where the bar is at first. Um, what's the food dog's name? Does the food dog have a name? Did we name the food dog? I don't know. Did even we remember. name the food dog? Did the food dog it has have a name? name? It has a name? I just whistled for him, so I don't know. Essie makes some sound that is probably resembling a whistle. <laughs> wow. Or Essie emits a, one of those high-pitched noises that only dogs can hear to try to get the food dog's attention. Because this is based on a specific franchise, it definitely has a name, and his name is Rat. 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 <laughs> so. His namesake is Mouse, so Rat. Wow, oh, that makes sense. Um, that Essie is looking at Kilowatt. Just something's happening over at the other bar. Yeah. So with your uh, X-ray your X-ray vision, life. Yeah. Three pyros. When you when you look through the walls, you see, you know, the destruction that has happened. You see the the outlines of smashed bottles. Uh, you know. Broken lights, smashed speakers, tables, stools. Um, but what you can't seem to make sense of, you know, because the lights are still going, the ones that haven't been smashed, and with the strobe effect that's going on, uh, you see blackness moving, but it has no form. Like just like a. It's like if you were using an you know an X-ray machine and it's just and a you just black can't splotch. See what it is. Oh, ew. Um, after having done that, just as I see everything that's broken in there, but it's I can't see what that is. Is there a and way it, to it bar? Is, it is moving. Is there a way to bar this door? You could try. What would well, you like to bar it with? 
good question. Um, Essay looks up to Kilowatt, just like, is there, can you see anything, any of the cameras in there, any security cameras? Uh, yeah, I mean, do we have such surveillance on the inside of the bar? Yes, there are simple security cameras. I'll look uh, on that stuff on the tablet real quick. See if there's any visual on what's going on in the bar. The techno club. Mm -hmm. Yes. So in the techno club, I got to find it. You see two of these these things just going all over the place, tearing up chairs, speakers. Um, uh, Pelawat, how protected is uh, one of Anki's rooms or one of those hidden spaces? He makes space in the building. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, like, what's the like most safe area in the like? Is there is there a panic room uh, <laughs> set up somewhere in the bar? Otherwise, Essie's about to put. The, there's two options here. Essie's about to either put uh, Iris into no, not on the bed. She needs to her touch. Sorry, the cat's throwing up on the bed. I'm so sorry. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Now we'll never know what she was going to do. Wow. <laughs> that cat has great timing. Oh, Lord. So sorry. That was the most unprofessional thing of my life. It's okay. <laughs> um, Please continue. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't hear that because it unplugged it too. Hi. Uh, so Essie's either going to put Iris into Caro's tomb or the lead box. So, I do have one, Duane, because we discussed that when I moved to Space 5. Yes. There is an extra-dimensional pocket dimension inside the bar. It is the ultimate panic room. Uh, i probably start backing us up that way. Um, like, doing whatever I can to, like, you know, uh, bar doors behind us or whatever like try to get people to safety and also text them and be like there's some i'll send a picture of the the thing attacking the bar could use some help uh when you send the message uh it just has that red unable to send please try again can we uh can i try to increase the power of the signal uh with forces three yes what is the um I, I'm sorry, I'm not really sure how the system would work for this. You got any ideas, Tyler? Or Dwayne? Oh, for boosting? Uh, just to, like, boost the signal, what should I roll? Uh, that would be potency. So, yeah. if three dots in it? Yeah. Okay, so you have four reaches. If you spent a willpower, you could get six dice for the roll with advanced range and advanced potency because you're trying to make her reaches. Yeah. With no paradox. And then that's giving it them a potency of plus six for whatever resistance you have to win. Yeah, that would be uh, four hits on that. So that's a success, but not an exceptional. Uh, 
Okay, so Irene, you get a text. Uh, Anki as well. I don't know who else has phones. I know Anki and Irene do. Probably Emma. So you all would receive this text. It's coming from Kilowatt. And it reads, you know, oh shit. Well, actually, how does it read, Kilowatt? Uh, uh, running for the panic room, shadow beasts attacking bar, and a picture. That's in the Discord. So it says all of that. However, some of the letters are transposed. Some of the letters are replaced with numbers. Uh, but it's easy enough to kind of look past all the weirdness to figure out what the message means. Uh, yeah, so Irene will, like, look at her phone. Uh, oh, shit. Come on, James, we gotta go. I tell both, uh, Irene... Rose... And Carol's busy, so both Irene and Rose at the same time. Wait, what? You're busy... I don't remember what you were doing, but you're doing something murdery when we froze. I was murdering nobody. How dare you? <laughs> no, pretty sure. I think we ran into guards or something. He knocked out the guard in the hallway. One guard that must got be what I remember. Yeah, yeah one <laughs> guard She stuffed got... him in a closet. Yeah. Uh, and I can only buy locate, not try locate. The message would go to Irene and Rose. Uh, I can only protect you or the child. Choose. The child. Irene wouldn't hear what Remember Rose said because there are two different parts of the building because I'm bi-located. What would Irene's answer be? Uh, Irene, uh, I can take care of myself. Then you should go help Carol and Rose. They'll need you. Alright, come on, James. And I'm going to break the universe when you're ready for me to do it. <laughs> break the universe. Okay, so now that I've moved to the final dots of time and space, I'm going to use extra reaches to uh, cast corridors of time on myself and on your uh, T6000 that you created. <laughs> My T6000? <laughs> yes. Okay. Which means I'm dropping the by location, but basically. I can entirely rewrite any moment in their past that I have access to, including my own and the subjects. So, for your T6000, I'm going to rewrite its past up to the moment where it was about to get injected with the uh, formula to turn it to a monster. Okay. Pop the clamps free out of its restraints so it can rewrite its own past from that moment forward. And then I'm going to reappear in the bar because I never went with the party into the Urachi facility. I was always here. Which doesn't Great. break their timeline, just mine. Just yours. However, I'm also going to take five points of damage from the Paradox because that's an immense amount of Paradox. Yeah. So as time rewrites itself, the body of this individual, or bodies, reorganize himself at the molecular level placing them exactly five feet apart back into their beds or back onto the tables and the clamps were undone you said yeah so a key I guess it's back to being a key at this moment stop himself from being injected yeah they <laughs> well Actually, I'll retcon slightly. Not back to I never went to the Arachi facility, but I teleported away from them. At the moment, Essie accidentally summons a god. I want to talk to it, too. <laughs> it, it, it's just, I don't know why this keeps happening to me and my characters, <laughs> but, you know. Anki just loves to talk to gods. Especially this one. It worked so well last time. Andromeda and Anki should talk sometime. 
Okay, so Irene and John start heading down the hallway uh, as Anki 2 disappears. Very shortly after, they arrive where Emma Rose and Caro are staring into a room that just has a couple of technicians that are bloody and smashed all over the place but two empty beds it doesn't make any sense it looked like something awful happened in this room but you seem to have missed it hmm this is not good Is the door open to this room? It has that, that same keypad uh, key card access that you've been getting in. It is easy for Emma Rose to get any, no problem. So Kara will turn to Emma Rose and just ask, should we go in there? Or do you think she's somewhere else? What type of I'm lost. Um, <laughs> um, let's just check it. Just in case. Caro nods, gets her sword ready, and then stands next to the door waiting for Emma Rose to open it. Just sword in hand. In case something jumps out. Mm -hmm. She'll open it for Caro to be ready. So the, uh, the door opens. You have that nice hermetic seal sound. And just as what you saw through the glass door uh, is the scene that you enter on. Two empty operating tables. and a couple of dead bodies that seem horribly mutilated. A nice metal case sitting on a far table. And that's it, there's no movement in here. The blood is fairly fresh. It kind of makes no sense. But at the same point, <clears throat> a uh, alarm starts to go off, but it's not on this floor. Okay. And over a loudspeaker, it's you hear a beautiful computerized voice. Containment protocols failed. Please vacate to the nearest exit. Containment protocols fail. Biohazard containment level four now in effect. You're welcome. That does not go. Uh, what were they saying about Meredith causing all the chaos? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me! It wasn't me this time. We, we need to go. John behind you is kind of freaking out. And I need everyone, uh, let's see, Irene, Emma Rose, Caro, and John will do it as well. Uh, just give me uh, uh, wits composure. Oh no. It's 
four successes for Kara. But why? Um, Love you too, success? Betty. But why? Betty. Why, <laughs> Betty? Why? <laughs> Uh, Has I he not you. already done that? I got, I got, I got <laughs> that, you. That already happened, but that already I'm sure happened. it's going to happen a, again. No, it hasn't. Delayed reaction, no, I'm no, sure. No, it hasn't. I got you. It's okay. I have been <laughs> thinking of many uh, backups for Tyler in this, this episode. <laughs> <laughs> How Dwayne and I spend our free time. If I do this, then what are you going to do? <laughs> Pretty much is. I write stuff down, he sends me something, and then I take a black marker or just throw the page away. So Carol had four, one for Emma Rose, and... Also one. Also one for Irene. So, yeah, what you guys feel is... similar to the effect that happened at the bar, which you were not there to witness. Uh, almost like a... A huge amount of energy is released from somewhere inside the complex. And you just get that that the power that's being released is is something that peaks your peaks your sirens. John doesn't seem to notice it at all. However, Caro with your four, what you do notice is right after this almost graviton burst, if you will, goes off. Uh, John starts to keel over and he begins to, to vomit on the ground. He's like, oh, I don't feel so good. And the little bit of vomit that comes out seems normal as he continues and continues on. Seems to get a little bit more viscous a little bit more black. And then the changes that he has already had begin to manifest themselves even more. And he complains about how his phone goes off. Complains about the pain and he keeps throwing up and throwing up, or, you know, massive amounts, almost a gallon of bile extrudes from this man's mouth over a matter of seconds and then it abruptly stops and he stands up hey he turns around Irene immediately you notice that pyros burn in his eyes but he's almost a little bit different Something's a little off. Uh, off in what way? You don't know. You can't put your finger on it. Something is not right. No answer. I'll, like, reach out and touch him. As you go out and touch him... For the first time in your life... You feel heat coming off of this man. Immense heat. And as soon as you touch him, you know, based on your own makeup, that he has been transformed into some Zeki offshoot as well. Okay. Okay. Um, we have to get him to the bar. Like, now. Uh, 
Uh, I will grab his hand and start making towards an exit. Hmm. So for Caro and Emma Rose, you now have Yeah, you're pretty much affected by the radiation at an intensity of one. Oh, dang, you were radiated. Okay. Oh, no. Irene, it doesn't really affect you. You can tell that something's not right. So there's radiation that we can yes. feel. Okay. Caro would try to grab Emma Rose and get the two of them out of there. Just out of the building. Because she uh, knows that Caro would survive the radiation. But maybe not this one. You're trying to drag Emma Rose out of the building? Yeah, and I know it's not going to end well. No, it's not. No. <laughs> um, well, so... I am already bringing this guy away from you. So once you are far, well, once he's far enough away, that should help the radiation exposure. Um. Yeah. Um. Emma Rose isn't budging. All right. So. She's not willingly is... going with you. I know it's going to be futile because Kara oh, is yeah. so much stronger than Emma, but she's not willingly going with you. Carl. She is on a mission. Well, so uh, as Irene and is, is it John or James? I thought it was James. Oh, yeah, James. Sorry. James yeah, John so, uh As we get farther away, can Kara sense like the radiation feel like the baiting? Like from, from around your friends. Yeah, because like I assume that the radiation is coming from James. Yes, yes. And so Irene is like, "All right, we're leaving now," uh, and so she's gonna drag him away from Emma Rose and Caro. And as that happens, like, can Caro sense the radiation field like getting weaker? Like, it's my question. So like. Would Cairo know? Oh, would Caro know? Not with, uh, yeah, so like, would Caro know that like he doesn't, or she doesn't have to move Emma Rose because Irene is taking the source of the radiation away with her? Not initially, because uh, that condition would still be present for a little bit, but it would eventually go away. How far are you going to pull him? Where I'm are taking, you going to pull him to? I am taking him back to the bar. So you get about halfway down the corridor. And you're pulling him around a corner. I need you to roll strength. Just strength. <laughs> no successes. I'll take a beat. And go for a critical failure? Yeah, why not? <clears throat> okay. So you're dragging him along and he's kind of following, still, you know, glazed over. And you can see more of that, that physical change going on. As soon as you hit that corner, a hand that was kind of, you know, under a shirt pulls out and it's kind of clawed and mangled and it grabs the side of the wall. Uh, and it's okay, so strong at how f fast you were pulling him that it kind of yanks you, it yanks you back and you fall down. Uh, to, to clarify, 
uh, did his normal hand change, or has he sprouted a third hand? He sprouted a third hand. Okay. Uh. Oh shit. Stand up, dust yourself off. James, James, we have to go. We have to go before you explode. I know where there is a place. It is safe. You will be safe. The people around you will be safe, but we have to leave now. He does not budge. That arm is dug into the wall. Oh, boy. Uh, is there any sort of, like, expression on his face? It is just a dead stare with a, like a green sheen on one eye and a total black other. Shit. Uh. I read, we'll just continue, like, okay, like tugging on him, like, we have to go, we have to go, please come with me. Roll strength again. Slightly better. One success. You do not budge. As you pull on them, the, the claws scratch the wall a little bit. He is not moving. Hmm. Uh, okay. Uh, in that case, uh, Irene will take up a defensive position and ready her MP5. She's expecting uh, Orochi agents to come and attack. What does Caro and Emma Rose do? You see Irene take off down the corridor, dragging this guy. You hear a little bit of a scuffle as Irene hits the floor. But then gets back up. Um, Emma Rose pushes Caro to <laughs> attempts to because um, <laughs> Caro is like a six foot tall built Amazonian woman. <laughs> attempts to push her down the hall towards um, Irene, um, saying, "Go help her. I still need to find Nadia." She she can handle that. Someone needs to look after you. I'm strong. Um, fine. Then we need to get going. Yeah. But let's move. Come on. She'll start her, continue her search down the corridor to find where Nadia's room is. All right. Back in the bar, there's a poof of energy and Anki arrives Artist noises. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, the words timey wimey jump into Essie's mind and she shakes it off. She doesn't know why it got there. <laughs> um, Mr. Auntie. Floos is going crazy. Yeah. Iris Floos. is trying to like calm him down, but he's going crazy. Iris, we need to go. We need to get you back over into your room right now. We're going to take care of this. Just take Mr. Floofs and we'll go to this room, okay? Till it gets quieter. And at the sound of the dog barking, and at the sounds of your voices, you see one of these giant balls of angriness crash through the, uh, the main door of the techno bar as wood splinters, glass shatters, pieces of whatever are going all over the place. And that is when you get your first good look at that. And it matches the picture that Iris drew, correct? The same thing? Somehow the picture is slightly more frightening, but yes. But it's close. Um... trying to figure out because Essie is in like she was told what to do by Emma Rose 
and Emma Rose is her friend, and Emma Rose wants the kids safe. So Essie is probably going to is is uh, Iris holding the dog? No, the dog's on the floor. Iris is just kind of holding your leg. She's scared. Yeah. Essie is going to like use her arm and like scoop up Iris and then do the same thing to Floofs. So she's going to just kind of like saddlebag hold both of them because she doesn't know how to properly hold a child. Um, so, and is just like, and is making her way to get at least towards the one of the corridors and shove them into whatever room that she could barricade, the nearest the, room. The super safe TARDIS room. The super safe TARDIS room, yep. So. Kilo, and Essie, what is your uh, reaction as this ball of anger? I'm also going to yell, check the kid, I've got the dog. Huh? The thing that it's, the ball of anger looks like a dog doing close to it. Yes. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I was thinking you were talking about floofs, and I've no, <laughs> I've got floofs. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm uh, running some stuff through the mage calculator, but my general idea is to try to speed us up so that we can run faster. All right. How did I do that? I don't know why I did that. Uh, let's roll some initiative for you guys. Kilowatt Anki. Uh, SE. And I'm even going to roll for Iris. I actually have to roll a spell first that would have gone off on my turn. Oh. Yeah, I, I go first because I choose to. Initiative's 12 for me. Because time. I'm magic. Can't wait till Rachel's character gets those ranks in the two stake Great. Where's my girl? Ah. There is your girl. <laughs> Where did it come from? Where did it go? Where did it come Where did from? It come? Where did it come from? from? Storyteller Queen. SEI Joe. SEI Joe. Joe. <laughs> Deviant eye, Dwayne. I know. All the mages are doing their mage numbers. Oh, I've got my... Yeah, turn. sorry. I can tell you what I'll do okay. on my turn. Oh, you're good? Go. I'm rolling. And I got two successes. So uh, I aimed for basically quadrupling our velocities. Okay. So oh, Tyler included... Or uh, Anki included. Uh, I got four of us. So, Essie, Kilowatt, Anki, and uh, Iris. Iris are moving uh, four times as fast. Okay. Still, you need you to roll me initiative. Oh, uh, sorry. What was the initiative roll? 1d10 and add it to wits and something? Is that how it works? Uh, yes. Add uh, the wit, wits roll and Roll 1d10 and it's dex and composure. Yeah, dex oh. and composure. Hang on. Dex and composure. All right, thanks. Uh, psh, seven. I'm going late. Huh? Oh, I got 12. Too many systems jumble in my mind. Initiatives. I feel you. Yeah, I have that problem all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> oh, goodness. All 
Anki, did you roll or are you gonna? I go first. Have some. Oh, you just automatically go first. Order with that spell, yeah. My bad guys. <laughs> what are you doing? Adding to my trauma. Okay, Anki, so you're first. It's for you, Betty. I vault the bar and redeem Tyler Pulls Tyler. I grab a bottle off the top of the shelf labeled Symbiosis. I cast a level 5 space sp spell, sacrificing a permanent point of willpower so that it's eternal, and I can release it and create unremovable sympathetic connections to the filth inside of me. And we merge. We become one. symbiosis. Do it that way you will. Then I turn and face the build dog. Hey. <laughs> Where's my dog at? Meanwhile, um, Savannah? <laughs> yes, my dear. <laughs> Savannah? Are you okay? Did you mean to click the one next to it where it helps us? And <laughs> is that the one you meant to click, but then you clicked uh, the other one? Is that what happened? I love you. So I'm Essie... here for a good time, not for a long time. <laughs> Neither is Essie, apparently. So here we go. <laughs> Essie, you are next. Oh, hey, look at that. All right. So, Essie will knows children are somewhat fragile, so isn't going to like absolutely yeet the child into the TARDIS room, but it's going to unceremonious an unceremonious dumping of child and dog into the TARDIS room and closing it. And uh, I thought I had some, I think that that's only with electric doors. Either way, closing the door, pushing a box in front of it, if there's a box nearby, <laughs> whatever. And then using those fast movements is making her way back to uh, standing like back behind where everyone is, where those two have rushed up towards the dog thing, um, but is, is there and we will, or would that be my action this turn? Can I do a, a fighty action? That would be your action this turn. That's a good feeling. Run down there. To eat the kid and yeah. then get myself ready for the next one. I also do feel like she set the paradigm for the extra dimensional space. Since it's outside of time and space, that's where we put all the stuff we don't know what to do with. So there are boxes in there of God knows what. So I just put a child in there with a bunch of danger boxes. I don't know if they're dangerous. We just didn't find any other place for them. Or question mark. Okay, great. So yeah, hopefully none boxes. of that is helpful for the it's spawn just, of it's, Satan. It's full of the it's full of the tuna that Carol ordered <laughs> when she ordered way too much, but you didn't want it to go bad, so you threw it in there. It's also a couple cultists in here that annoyed Carol. Forgot the name. She forgot. Perfect. About. They can. Oh, they weren't oh. annoying. They were just <laughs> unsatisfactory in their labor. And as she's about to close the door, if Essie takes a quick moment and grabs the nearest coloring book and crayons, tosses them in there and then closes the door back behind it too, then the cultists can help with that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, then gets ready for whatever next turn I'll have. <laughs> All right, Iris does some skullduggery behind the scenes since she is now in her room. Kill what? Um. Yeah, I was just uh, trying to get that spell off to get make us go fast. Uh, that was uh, was the, did I get that before we rolled initiative or after? yes before? Okay. Um. So for mine, I'm probably gonna. I don't know. Uh, Anki just did some weird shit and I'm trying to stay out of in between Anki and the dog but uh, I'll try to like take up a defensive position and see if I can't find an actual gun 
uh, somewhere around here to, you know, like maybe one of us has an automatic firearm behind the bar. Um, I don't know. Does that exist? Give me a... Uh... Hmm. Should there be a shotgun behind the bar? Probably. I mean, every every bar has a shotgun behind the bar. If you don't, it's not a good bar. All right. Then I will take up a defensive position in case it comes closer. I'm ready to shoot with the shotgun. And it does come closer as the one that had barreled out of the door starts running towards the main bar as the second one comes out from the techno bar. The first one will try to dive up onto the bar and go for kilowatt, but you can make that shot since you had yeah. prepared yourself. Is that just Dex and Firearms? Dex and Firearms. Whoa. Okay, that was uh, two tens and two nines. Is this ten That's again? A, yeah, exceptional. Uh, we'll just do. We'll just do two. All right. A lot easier. So exceptional success. I wish I could remember what shotgun was. Shotgun. Gotta look it up real quick. All I know is shotguns do nine again. Oh, they do? Oh, yeah. well then, yeah. Even better. <laughs> so how many successes is it? Was it two, four, six, eight? Yeah. Three damage and nine again. Three damage and nine again? One, two, three, four, five. All right, yeah. So you shoot this thing as it's jumping through the air. You pretty much stop it uh, midair. It hits and kind of goes flying into some chairs. And uh, while there's no blood, uh, wisps like from the wounds that you have made in this thing, uh, wisps of blackness as if space itself were escaping from it and a flow out. The other giant wolf dog. Now, did you throw Mr. Floofs in there with Iris, Essie? I sure did. Okay. Then it's going to go after you. Oh, I mean, it was totally out <laughs> here. <laughs> All right. No, yeah, I threw the dog in there with it. I mean, the child, not it. You all know that children don't have a gender until they reach a certain age. He's progressive. This thing She's runs up to you. Great. And you're lucky I rolled zero. Yeah. So this thing just swipes at you with its huge claws. It catches the side of a side of the bar as wood goes flying off. That brings us back to Anki if Anki decides to go first. Oh yeah. It's time to X-Files this shit. I'm integrated now. I lock eyes with the one on the bar since we're at eye level now. And I say, sit be a good dog. I would like to force control of it through my filth. You tell me how that would work. I'm gonna see if it can... Uh, what is your... Ooh.
This is where my job gets hard because I gotta make stuff up on the fly. <laughs> um, give me. Mm. Okay, this is gonna be animal. Animal Ken. Plus resolve plus half of your fuel source. Also, you should know, because that spell I cast, that five dot spell, mm -hmm. any version or variation of the thing I connected myself to, I get to add my space dots to those rules too. Since Good it's filled. Okay. Also, half my fuel source. You sure about that? Well, no. Now that you get to add space, no, I'm not going to give you half the fuel source. That would have been like, I don't know, seven dice. Itself. These are rookie numbers. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be six. Yeah, it's not going to work for... Okay, so it howls in almost in pain as it goes against everything it knows and it sits. Join minds with it so that I can give it commands. So the effect is we both turn and look at the underdog. And then we both leap at it. That's it. That's the whole turn. Okay. Essie, you see this happen. Anki just says sit and one of the one of the giant filth dogs sits. Anki doesn't they have both any turn. eyes anymore either, just black oil. And they both turn on the one that just attacked you. They turn in unison. Uh by which yeah. I mean his eyes aren't black. They're just sockets with oil in them. It's like sloshing slightly. Gross. Uh, so Essie is, uh, if they're both moving towards the big dog, she's going to move away from where that is, kind of not like somersault jump or anything out of the way, but just kind of like, I don't feel like getting tackled today by anything else. Um, and but when she as she's doing that she's still making sure that she's standing closer to the door where she put uh iris and i guess uh yeah because i don't i don't want to do anything because i was gonna splash it with some acid but like now they're all there and i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not feeling like hearing about that later unless i could aim <laughs> could I just aim at the other dog the dog that tried to get me or would that hurt uh, I don't know. Does your acid have like a splash? It doesn't say. It's got like a. It's the um, the aqua regia. It's like this king's water. It's a caustic substance, and I can. Yeah, it's a. It, it doesn't say that it has a. Uh, requires touching the target to touch it. Uh, I'm just double checking. You think there's a ranged one? On? Oh, there's a ranged one for three. Okay, yeah. Uh, I don't think it has a splash, actually. So then all you need to do is touch it. I'm gonna punch it with an acid fist. That's what we're gonna try. Sorry. Okay. Punch it with said acid fist. All right, so that's a, a stamina, a cult, and Azoth. So that's one, two, three. Or... Five. Okay, so this is. Oh my gosh. I've got to pop the little chat thing out. Hang on. So that's 5d10. And that's spent three A's off. And that is two successes if we're doubling tens.
So you go and swing on this thing. Mm -hmm. If you hit it, and you hear the tss of the acid, mm -hmm. but it seems to have no effect on it. But it says it will do two lethal damage equal to my success. If you I got past, if you get past its defense, yes. What's its defense? Three. Rude. Okay, <laughs> fine. It goes. I'm gonna make it go more later. So I do that kind of punch and then kind of get myself set up by the door. They don't have a lot of defense. They have a little bit, but they do have a lot of health. Then I will find something else. Good. That's fine. It's better than my next one. You hear some banging going on on the door as Iris is, you know, slamming her fist on the door. She's like crying, but at the same time she's yelling, I want to help. I'm a superhero. She's banging on the door. Don't leave me in here by myself. These weird people in the tuna. I'll be right there. Just wait a second. Uh, you can still hear uh, Mr. Floof barking hysterically. Uh, a kilowatt. The one that you had fired on and had fallen uh, is now turned and looking at the other one in front of Essie as a strange placid look has also come over Anki. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's still a filth dog. I can't really tell if I like the fact that Anki seems to have merged with it or not, so I think I might still shoot it. There's another uh, one trying to eat Essie's face. That is true. Um, the other thing I was curious about is, uh, can you, um, I'm trying to remember if what level of prime you need uh, to like enchant like bullets uh, to do more damage or something like that. Two. Yeah, that's a prime to do it. Uh, do you know what the 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 dice? Uh, are you It'd running be the potency. And for every uh, dot of potency you add, you get an additional die of damage from the weapon. Okay. okay. And if you go saying. to the advanced scale with reach, it yep. becomes armor and defense penetrating. Uh huh. Meaning, for every dot of potency, you do extra damage, and you can bypass one dot of whatever its defense or armor is. So at least three. Right. It's armor mage is math. Thick nastiness. Sorry, I'm just doing mage math. So I think I can get a potency five and still have three dice left. In the pool. So another willpower to make it six. Is there only two sessions left? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Or an audience vote if you have one. I'm glad I did that because uh, I only got two successes. But that's enough oh. for it to work. That is enough for it to work. And then I assume I take my firearm shot too. Yes. Yeah. So Dex Firearms still... Uh, three. Which I hope hits. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. So your shotgun goes off with a magical boost to the uh, to the boom. What was your potency on that that you used? Um, five. Plus the regular shotgun damage. Numbers, numbers, numbers. And it bypasses numbers, numbers, numbers. All right. Boosted Irene for when it's your turn again. Think. For Narnia. Ever with these puns. Or Ambrose with these puns. Names with my mind. So yeah, Kilowatt fires off his magical shotgun. Uh, and even more chunks of this foul creature fall off of the one in front of Essie. Uh, you've blown off its tail almost completely. Half of its rear leg as more uh, filth drips onto the ground and a uh, weird spatial mist emanates from the wounds. What are you doing, Ambrose? I... <laughs> But how the dogs are going to go. Uh, the one... Actually, you know what? We're going to cut to everyone in the facility. Uh -huh. Oh, no. Where they all, Where I will thus invoke the power of the Elder Gods. As so desired. Yep. Oh. Oh, perfect. Just what I wanted. So as Irene is preparing herself for the impending uh, onslaught of Arachi security guards that strangely don't seem to come, uh, you all again feel this huge pulse of energy that seems to be being forced out from somewhere inside the complex. And again, you hear that computerized voice go off. Emergency. Biocontainment protocols fail. Biocontainment You're all level, going to die. level six is now in effect. And from down the corridor, you see a single woman walking down. As she walks down with each step, the walls buckle out. She takes one more step and the wall buckles out. Mm -mm. Does this I... look like damage to the walls or is it just like warping space? Yes. Both. Okay. <laughs> I Great. regret nothing. Once the alarm goes off, you do hear a bunch of locks on the doors go off as it seems as the computer or whoever is in security seems to be locking off the area, uh, trying to contain whatever is happening. And then, Irene, you do hear the footsteps of a large contingent running down the corridor. Emma Rose and Caro, as you see this female in... Uh, you know, a patient get up. You begin to see some of the cadavers in the room that was adjacent to the only what you could explain as the dead body room. Morgue. It's where we keep the dead bodies. Yes, but these were cadavers that were being experimented on. The lights start to flicker, almost like electric goes off. And small, tiny little holes open up in the air and drops as if the juice of the gods, the black juice, 
falls out of these holes, dripping and oozing onto these cadavers. It seeps in <clears throat> through the orifices, spreading through the veins. Orifices, oh. <laughs> uh huh. Or orifices. Orifices. <laughs> orifices. <laughs> orifices. Ah, uh, the greatest Greek warrior, orifices. Orifices. <laughs> But because of some individual, almost immediately as the bodies begin to rise and rise, they stop moving. There you go, Ambrose. You happy? <laughs> Nevertheless, you still have a woman walking down this core of four of the. The Were you corpus. trying to say corridor? <laughs> no, I, like, I was trying to say corridor, and then I, and then I looked over at Chet and I said, "Or the corifice." Yes, the corifice <laughs> So corifice sees this woman walking down the hall. <laughs> Attempts to step uh, in front of Emma Rose to be something of a meat shield. I it's... need both of you to again roll uh, wits and composure. Okay. Bits, composure. Irene, ten again. if you. No, not ten again. Or, yeah, 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 normal, yeah. Just, just do add two. Just do two for tens. Make it quicker. Numbers. Nautilus hooked you up. It's a corridorifus. The corridor, <laughs> corridorifus. Nautilus, add it again. <laughs> All the size. Not having it. <laughs> so that's one success for Caro. If my sheet wants to roll or not. Irene, as you're readying yourself, as you can hear the boot steps moving, you know, moving down the corridor. You see the, the group, probably about four or five of them. And you hear the, the screech of their boots halt as they see you and this strange individual standing next to you. They all raise their their weapons. They uh, look at the one that looks in looks like he's in charge. He looks back at his men and he looks at you and he says, "Shoot the hostage!" And they open fire. Fun. But which uh. one's the hostage? I don't know. I couldn't think of a quick Keanu Reeves quote. Right off the top of my head. So I went with speed. You got another uh, boost, uh, Rachel. That's two. Thank you. Uh, I will return fire. Did your sheet finally work for you, Emma Rose? I, I manually wrote I have uh, one success. Hey, it's your daughter. Ah, hell. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, cool. Um, I push past Caro. What are you doing? Um, and she like holds up her, her hand, so she's like, um, not like menacing or anything like that. And um, she'll call out um, Nadia. Do you remember me? As you move closer, you realize that she's not even actually on the ground. She's floating about six inches above it. She does not answer you. She continues to move forward, though. 
And with each instance that she gets closer and closer, the walls again buckle out. Okay. Let's see. What can I do? Irene, are you going to open fire on these guys? Yes, I am. Oh, an MP5 is not exciting as far as damage goes. What do you got for me, Irene? Uh, what would you like me to roll? Oh. Uh, Dex Firearms. Okay. And then I get three dice for a boost. Yes, because it's just like a, uh, like a willpower. That is two successes. All right, so you're able to actually mow down two of these guys. Uh, as they return fire back. four successes between a number of them. What is uh, Irene's defense? Four. Well, so yeah, the bullets whiz past you, some of them catching your clothing. Uh, graze your skin a little bit. One of them happens to fly past you and hit James. Uh, almost square. You see his body rock back. But he doesn't move. He doesn't cry out. It's still that blank stare. Uh, however, the you can see the jawline like grit down as if he's doing something. And at that very moment, you see that the uh, like lead guard. You see the front of his gun start to melt. Cool. I'm gonna. What was it? Cool. Yes. Cool. I'm a Rose Carol. Your daughter is moving towards you. So I'm assisting a little bit here. Uh, Emma Rose My brain would, doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Emma Rose would like to use a new contract bought with XP recently called Tumult, which allows her to read someone that it's especially easy if you know them well, like a child, and impart conditions. And then a second contract to take advantage of imparting the conditions. So 
in part broken, which forces the subject to stop being violent or take violent actions by reminding her of weaknesses as a child. And then the second contract is discreet summons to reach into the shadows and recreate a precious thing from the child's childhood to remind her this is her mother. Requiring Emma Rose to roll presence plus empathy plus weird, weird twice. Okay, Emma Rose. Before you roll that, I want you to take this into consideration because I am. How long did you actually know your daughter? Um, if I remember correctly, I think it was like five years. So about the age that um, Iris is now. The best years to pull emotional tur turmoil from. Okay. I don't I, like, I, I knew, don't like, I don't I knew like the answer. Face. I knew the answer. I wanted to know if you knew the answer because I was using that answer. Okay. I was just like, do we have the same answer? I hope so. <laughs> it, I, it, okay. it would affect my decision. If you were like, oh, I wanted to make her feel how vulnerable she was on her first date at 16, I would have been like, fail. Mm -mm. Nope. Oh, but, a, but, a, but, a. but you still gotta roll. I know. Do I have any boosts left? Because we all have several. Very few of us have used them, like the okay. audience awards. What do boosts do again? Do I get extra dice or Plus what? Three. three willpower. It's three dice. Okay. Cool. So, everyone, has, in the, uh, everyone in the show has at least two that hasn't been used by my camera. Okay. So I'll do that because my presence and empathy is fucking weak. <laughs> I didn't build her to be empathetic. Uh, two successes on the first roll. Okay. So as you call out to her, What did that? What is your contract do again? Forces the subject to remember something vulnerable or painful that imposes a condition of Emma's choice. In this case, broken, which removes all desire to do violence. You just kind of give up your attempts to hurt people. What contract is this? Uh, tumult. So as you call out her name, you see her facial expression change. The uh, scared child that you did know, you, you, you see it in that face. Uh, the woman that she has become, you know, it's like looking in a mirror almost. Um, however, Though it seems that she has regained some lucidity, her body does not stop. She continues to move forward. But she does see you, and then she does speak out. She goes, Mom? You look young again. I never stopped looking young. I just saw you a couple days ago and you were old. <sighs> Sweetie, that, <clears throat> that was never me. Your <sighs> husband's <laughs> you know what he is you can see she's she's still useless uh, not useless lucid as you're talking to her and she looks down and she sees that she's floating she goes oh my god what it 
it's she it's has okay. No idea what's going on. They did something to you, okay? But I I'm gonna try to fix it. But Iris is safe. You gotta try to fight it for Iris. I don't even know what's going on. Just try to take control. She momentarily stops. This is your body, your power. They might have done this to you but it's now yours. So we can do this together internally. Emma's like, I don't know how, but I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like every good mom in the end. <laughs> I don't know how, but I'm gonna sure figure it the fuck out. <laughs> well, we're gonna find out how we're going to do that. But not right now. We're going to take a 10 minute break. <laughs> uh, I've got 641 Eastern time. So why don't we take our 10 minute break and come back at 651 Eastern time. Where everyone can reju re rest and revitalize.
So just now, right? We're back. <laughs> We're back, everybody. We libated it up and evacuated the contagion within us. <laughs> so we're gonna get wow. back to the <laughs> back to the combat. What is going on? What we're, <laughs> we're, we're having a day? Have you? Oh my gosh! Did you get an injection of the black gooey stuff? You're kind of repeating yourself like some of our other characters on other games. Probably. <clears throat> Speaking in three. So the last thing that Emma Rose and Caro see uh, is the frightened face of Emma Rose's daughter as her body goes against itself based on the contract that you had put in place and black visceral tendil, ten, ten, uh, tendrils uh, burst from her body kind of sticking her there in a strange web uh, as she is momentarily stopped Almost immediately as that happens, you hear <laughs> as, <laughs> as that happens, you hear <laughs> I imagine heavy gunfire. Yes, you hear heavy gunfire, uh, but not on the floor that you're on. You can hear it all throughout the facility. Uh, the screams of men just come pouring down, you know, vents uh, above and below you. And you hear something, many somethings, <clears throat> crawling through the ventilation ducts. You hear that the screams continue on you hear more you know growlings and and like demonic screams demonic cackling but we'll bounce back over to the bar where the dogs have yet to go how would we like to roll this I will roll the dog as if it's attacking the other dog. Okay. Because why not? We'll let that dog go first. <clears throat> That's not enough dice. That's enough dice. Essie is not in the facility. So the dog under Anki's control leaps forward to the one that was attacking Essie and bites onto its the back of its neck, crushes down. And <clears throat> as the body slumps on the floor, it doesn't stay corporeal. It almost immediately turns into a vicious goop that, uh, kind of seeps into the floors some of it making its way over to Anki's foot going up his leg and it's right about then <clears throat> that the door to your Tartarus bursts open and Iris comes out that moment, I'm leaning over, petting my new friend, saying, that's a good girl, and whispering whatever to it. So we both sit there and bubble with purity, with unity. And Iris looks out. She looks at Essie. Says, Why would you lock me in there with those strange people? Go ahead, Mayor. Tell everyone why you... <laughs> Locked her in there. <laughs> Tell us in a sonnet. Yes. <laughs> Please deliver your epic eulogy. 
<laughs> oh my god. You need to uh, have show tunes on demand ready. I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> sitting here trying to think of, uh, you know, I'm sitting here trying to think of something about. As she's staring, like looking at you, waiting for your answer, Mr. Floofs runs out as well. And the little black, like, you know, a little bit of goo that hasn't, like, left he goes over and is, like, chewing on it. Who let the dogs out? Who? 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 Um. You should probably stop him from doing that. Lame. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I brain farted. I didn't think that I would actually have to answer a question. Um. The foo dog is trying to consume the rest of the unity. No. Floof Put that says, thing back where it came from, or so help me. I will, I will. So help me. So help me. As she's running over to <laughs> scoop up Floof to try to get Floofs away from the black void stuff. And I will command Eclipse to go clean up that mess. Did not name that dog. <laughs> that was quick. I know. Thanks, Ambrose. Um. And then uh, I was still trying to think of song stuff, but I blanked really hard. I will sing later too if it comes to me. <laughs> but yeah. You see, Ira, Iris looks visu visually sad. Not not scared sad, but kind of disappointed. Put on a happy face. Uh, she looks at Eclipse. Slightly confused. It's not destroying anything. What happened? This is my friend now. You made a friend? did that's great where'd the other one go it's part of us she was like what that's the <clears throat> also huh we have absorbed it into the hole we are we are we are unity Anki, are you feeling okay feel pretty fucking amazing, actually. She looks over at Kilowatt that's behind the bar with the shotgun. She goes, What's he talking about? To be honest, I'm not so sure. I kind of, like, don't put down the shotgun like I'm debating whether or not I put it in Anki. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like waiting for him to do something uh, aggressive towards us. Uh, I just sit there and pet Eclipse. Yeah. But uh, the policy around this bar is if uh, you're being civil, we don't shoot. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's inscribed on like the side of the shotgun. <laughs> 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 Yes. Only discharge against the rude. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anki, how did you make that listen to you? The unity is inside of me, and we are one. We are joined. There is no difference anymore. <sighs> I unity am. is. And a uh, unity, what is that? Is that the the contagion we saw? I thought his name was Anki. That's a baser Anki? That's a baser word for it, but yes. Huh? Baser word for it. Are, am I speaking to Anki? Yes. Essie would look over at Iris slightly. Does Sarah know what happened? 
I don't think Sarah and I would necessarily agree with what to do with the Unity. You know Sarah, Anki? At this point, Anki would know who Sarah is. I can feel her, yes. Do you have the same mother? Unclear. <laughs> and I, see, I am aware as... of her mother. Terrifying. Glorious. Wonderful. But we don't want her in this world. We don't want unity in this world. If we're lucky, I can <laughs> absorb it all and return it for where it came from. We lost Rachel. Yep. Uh, She's not back in a second. I'll fix the camp. So you're trying to stop the contagion still? Is that thing contagion? As he's just trying to process, like she's just like recalculating, recalculating, recalculating. We can't stop it. Maybe we can redirect it. To where? Away from the incident. From the what? away from the innocent. Innocent. How? Working on it. So are you just going to... this is a start, and I, and I gesture towards Eclipse. This was so, contagious, now it is not. Can you teach us how to do that as well? Only at great cost. I like where this is going. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The Andromeda's leaking through. I've got to redirect and get it back to Essie. Would you like ah. to be part of the whole Essie? No. <laughs> um, can we get it out of you and put it somewhere else? There is no it or I. We are one now. It is me. In the same way that it is Sarah, it is me. It's not inside of me. It's not an infection. It's me. I see is looking at Kilowatt. Like, kind of just this question in her eyes. Is this a mage thing, or...? It is 100%. Kilowatt is talking about correspondence connections. Sympathetic connections. Yeah. Iris herself is trying to absorb all of this. She just goes, is he pregnant? <laughs> makes, that makes Anki <laughs> laugh. And Essie looks at Anki. Are you pregnant with it? Are you carrying it to spread it? No. I would like to remove it from this city. Still glances over at Kilowatt. <laughs> Sees, like, Essie sees that Kilowatt has not put down the shotgun yet, so she's still kind of, like, tense and charged as well. Where are the others? They're still you at were... the facility. As far as I know, I'm sure they're in grave danger. <laughs> I was told to protect Iris over them. Should, would you be able to go back and maybe use that to help them? Let's see. Did Try you find my did. mom? Huh? You did what? Did you find my mom? This is also for you, Betty. I say, let's see and open a scrying window directly to whatever's happening to Emma Rose in front of Iris. <laughs> <laughs> so we can all see it like on TV now. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Not awesome. So Amazing. in the middle of this corridor, your your video screen pops up and you see the corridor where Emma Rose and Caro are standing. Iris is able to see her mother a little bit further down with these black, strange black tendrils coming out of her body, you know, pinning her to the, the wall and ceiling. And it is then, 
with all the chaos that is going off with the alarms, the gunfire, the screaming, two other strange abominations burst out of the ventilation duct above the two of you. Now I need Emma Rose, Caro, and Irene to roll initiative. Uh, let's see if Astral wants to be nice to me. I don't think so. Uh, 11. Uh, what is uh, initiative? D10 plus. Dexterity and composure. Dexterity and composure. Thank you. Sorry, I was muted. No, it's okay. Mm, math. Seven. Uh, tw- 12. 12. Just a seven for Caro? Indeed. Emma Rose with a 12. Mm-hmm. Remaining security guards that are on this floor, at least. Wow, they're quick. I got a six. A second. All right. So these two that jump down. God, my rolls are awful. Oh, no, they're not. Wow. That's uh, that's pretty awesome. Okay. So. <clears throat> As the first one jumps down, breaking through the grating above you, the first one lands in front of Caro. And as it's coming down, it comes down with this strange, uh, meaty looking hooked claw. Uh, almost like something you would see in a, a meat locker. That's a lot of that. your defense four it catches on your clothing but is unable to get you the second one jumps down behind Emma Rose what is Emma Rose's defense we. All right, Di, you're, you haven't laid flat yet. <laughs> and misses you as well. Our nice. Rolls are not good. That's fine. And it's now Emma Rose's turn. Um, Emma Rose would like to uh, dash past the shadow thingies, dogs, beasts, um, down the hallway towards her daughter. While she's doing so, I'd like to reach into my bag um, and pull out a baby blanket. Uh, with discrete summons. Please. Okay. 
Um, and it's one from her childhood um, that uh, he's been holding on to. Um, and she's just making a dash for Nadia. So he had had it and you took it from him? Yep. And you pulled it out? Well, no. So, uh, <laughs> brain. Where did it go? Do, 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 do. So the loophole, it, so I can pull this object from basically anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so the loophole is uh, the change loophole is an object from that is belongs to or guarded by an enemy. So okay. he had it in his house. So she's pulling it now to this realm because mm-hmm. uh, it was the one thing like he would taunt her with. Mm. Um, and so she's pulling it into this realm. She just wants to try and get Nadia to not be back to normal because that's not going to happen uh, because, you know, fuck Urachi. Um, but she just wants to try to connect her um, and try to get her to be more in control of whatever is happening in her body. And she thinks like maybe grounding her would help her do that. Mm. That's the thought process behind all of this. So every time that she <clears throat> rolls for control, she will roll with a bonus. So yeah, so yeah, she's sprinting down. Um, and uh, I'm just gonna tell you, uh, M. Rose is not gonna get care if she gets touched by Black Goop. I'm just telling you now. Okay. Far off in a, uh, a side alley somewhere in Chicago, A man receives a phone call. Says. Something has. Happened. Something beneficial to the hunt. Here are your new coordinates. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Since this item was so important to him. They will now follow. It's fine. Irene, you still got a couple of security guards gunning down on you. Pew, pew. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. Dex, uh, Dex firearms. Second boost. Oh, that's nice. Uh, three successes. All right. You managed to take out the uh, two smaller lackeys and hit the commander. Uh, he does not go down, but he is seriously wounded. As you can see that more of his gun uh, has been melted. Almost the entire front of the barrel has liquefied and is now a boiling puddle on the ground. Uh, I will aim at him and say, you should go. That's my turn. Nadia will fight for control, seeing the blanket of her childhood. And does. That's my girl. <laughs> Caro. You have two of these strange mutated looking individuals. Hook hands. Like something out of the Mutant Chronicles. Caro takes the sword and attempts to plunge it directly into Hook Hands' stomach. Mm. 
what would Hook Hands' defense be? Six. Wow. That's a lot of defense. BD. That's one success. So that's six lethal damage. Because this sword is amazing. Said six lethal? Six lethal damage. As Caro takes it, stabs right through, and yanks the sword out. It does significant damage to the body. It also has armor piercing three, if that's a factor. The sword is it's terrifying. It is a factor? Yeah. But still, he still takes a lot of damage. And that's Caro's turn. The remaining security guard that Irene had told to run sees that his gun is melting, drops it onto the ground. Says, this is obviously a fight that I cannot win. But you might not win it either. He pulls a strange little almost like PDA looking thing types in a couple of numbers on it it's a what could be like an enter button drops it onto the ground and then runs uh, is that a weapon of some kind because uh, Irene has an innate sense of how people are armed yes this is a weapon of sorts Uh, like, is it about to blow up, or...? Does it allow you to know what the weapon does? Um, let me look it up. Uh, the Zeki is aware when someone approaches them with a weapon, if that weapon is a firearm or explosive, they also know the range, rate of fire, quantity of ammunition, yield, and other details related to this function. All it right. is a weapon, but it is not a firearm or explosive. Okay. I'm just going to stomp on it with my toothpick. So you go to stomp on it with your boot. And as your foot comes down, it is stopped by a fourth arm that has emerged from James. James no longer has that placid look. James has been activated. Are you better now? He just smiles. It's like teeth beginning to grow. Yes. I am better now. I need you to roll a uh... Actually is it his turn? It is his turn. Yay. Give me strength and brawl. Oh, the bad news is <laughs> it was a critical it was it was a bad one yeah yeah uh no successes and a one so as he smiles at you he tells you that he feels better caro you see iris or irene's body come hurling down the corridor Shameful. <laughs> Shameful. <laughs> Couldn't even handle yourself. Uh, shame what is, for shame. What is your defense, Irene? Four. Yeah, 
at one. What the hell? You guys are looking at my rolls of garbage. So you merely go flying down the hallway. And uh, slam into the side wall, making a huge dent. Uh, you only take one bashing. Yay. Your body then hits the floor. And... Uh-oh. I think my internet's about to give up. No! <laughs> it just got really, really dark all of a sudden outside, and everything started slowing down. No! I can't take the suspense. I think I might be back. Okay. There you are. Hey! Oh, you never left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that got really, it was like tornado dark all of a sudden. And then everything started slowing down. Okay. So you guys back at the bar, you all see this. The last thing you see is Irene's body fly past the scry window. Whee! So what do you guys do? Are you guys just going to keep watching? Can we go through to help them? I Not asking Anki. Moving the scene back, should I answer that? Oh, was that yeah, so, shifting yeah, to us? Okay, that it's shifted back to you. Sure. Yeah, yeah, no, it shifted to us in the scrying window, I thought. In yes. that case, when you say that, I look to the left of Iris and I say, Sarah, see what's happening with your glorious self there? Do you really approve of what those humans are doing with your flesh? Essie looks over to Iris slash Sarah. That's your mother's flesh. Now, at this point, Caro or uh, Anki, you see Sarah all the time as like a shadowy entity that is just on Iris's shoulders all the time. She answers you normally. Okay. This is this is the will of mother. Are you sure? One of your people here asked for assistance. She was more than willing to provide anywhere where she can spread her children. Doesn't yes. matter how we're used. And at this point, I'm looking at her, but I'm looking through her because I'm trying to talk. You guys all see Irish just kind of looking blankly at Anki. Yes, but they're not spreading it. They're trying to contain it, control it, and only use it how they want and where they want. That's not what you want. I merely go and do what Mother tells me to. It's not my decision. In my head, I'm not talking to your child, but I don't say anything to Sarah. These people are not going to help awaken the dreamers. That's not the thing. What was that? These people are not going to help awaken the dreamers. That's not what they want. We shall see. And I'll prove it to you. And then I'll turn it into a teleport platform. The whole bar? No. The scrying window so that Essie oh. and Kilowatt can move through it like it's a door. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the outlines of the scrying window change ever so slightly 
and almost immediately not only were you be, were you able to see but now you can smell and hear all that is going on is there a clear bad guy on the other side that I can shoot at yeah I mean you have uh, two very large looming uh, hook handed individuals All uh, right. one of them with a sword through their their center <laughs> with Caro on the other side uh, and then if you didn't know properly yet, you do see a strange woman in a medical uniform floating in the air, surrounded by tentacles. I'm not sure who the enemy is here anymore. Um, I'm just going to hold my shot. I mean, if it helps, um, the woman floating, uh, I'm assuming looks like Emma. Dwayne, you can correct yes. me if not, I'm wrong. Not identical, but very close. Um, I'm basically, if anything tries to get in the way of our friendlies on that side of the portal, I'm going to take a shot at it. That's how I'm going to determine. But otherwise, just holding. For the rest of you that are still in the Arachi facility, uh, you now see a door that has opened a portal. And you see everyone in the bar area standing on the other side. Are we able to pass through that? Just make it in my brain like we saw we saw um kilowatt go through it right i don't know did kilowatt go through did kilowatt go through no kilowatt's just taking aim through it taking aim to make through sure it. yeah gotcha cool great uh, what is james up to yeah so james after throwing you down the hallway is moving but very slowly towards the uh towards you towards the group uh does he look hostile at all yeah okay uh he did just you... throw you down a hallway yeah i know i'm just <laughs> a good mental picture of what's going on here. Uh, Irene will pick herself up, ready her gun again, uh, and then say, James, you son of a bitch, we're trying to help you. Don't make me shoot. He just says nothing, and you see that toothy grin, man, it is pouring out there. <laughs> Uh, I will hold position uh, until he takes another aggressive action. Okay. What are the rest of you in the bar doing other than... My question was going to be is how is Iris reacting to what she sees? that'll determine a lot of what Essie does. Iris is very confused as she does see Emma Rose 
and her mother, which she can recognize easily. Um, her mind does seem, seem to be elsewhere uh, because of the... Because of Sarah. Because right? of Sarah. It's not that she is overtaken, but she's just kind of detached from the situation. Yeah. Then she gets um, her bearings. And then she you see like a single tear come down her right eye. And she yells, "Mom!" And she doesn't know what else to do. So she turns around and runs towards the TARDIS door. And she opens it up and it's not the TARDIS. What do you mean? It's another door to another place. Essie's gonna run after her. Walks in and closes it. Essie's gonna run after her and swing open the door and do it. She was told to watch the kid. She's not letting the kid go. Essie's going to end up somewhere bad by the look on Savannah's face. So here we go. <laughs> What's Essie's speed? Fast. Uh, 12. Times, times, times four. four. Times four. Times well, four. Iris also has times four. <laughs> well, but was I faster than Iris to begin with at a speed of 12? Oh, uh, you're probably, you're probably going to be able to catch up to her. Yeah. Again, if not, I've got, I've got Promethean things to make me fast too. I'll spend a Pyros on that. So what's your total speed after the times four? So it would be, oh God, 48. And then if I used, is four, well, is 48 enough to start enough. with? Okay, cool. Then I don't need to remethian things. Yep. Hmm. Gonna go with Iris through that door. I love you, Mayor. I love you too. <laughs> You you told Essie to do one thing. She is a nope. toaster. No, she I did. <laughs> but if I know Dwayne, y'all are ending I up know, in a good place. I think we're gonna. I think I have a feeling where we might end up. And uh, Iris knows exactly where she's going. She does this all the time. Yep. Hmm. For what seems to be a long time for Essie. Like a couple years goes by as you have we'll just call it a nice hike with Iris who seems to know exactly where she's going. Mm -hmm. You stop at a nice market if you will. Sounds dandy. Good. She trades some doodads for some other doodads. Okay, what are those? As you have would ask. no idea. <laughs> and your expedition continues. For the rest of you, about <laughs> 20 seconds later, one of the janitorial closets in the Arashi facility opens and out falls Essie and then out pops Iris. Essie looks messed up. Like it is look like she has been through this shit. Essie, mm -hmm. choose one of your. Uh, what are your powers? Uh, I have uh, sensorium and metamorphosis, so like sensory things and changing my appearance mildly. So since Essie was kind of, she kind of fell out of the closet when she looks up to see where everyone is you notice that Essie only has one eye 
you're going to lose one of your sight powers, but you are going to gain another metamorphosis at two dots. You got Ooh. off cheap. Yeah. Your you're a good negotiator, Goblin Markets. <laughs> we, as we always know. And chat never lets us down. <laughs> two points to Mel. <laughs> Great. Cool. Uh, I'll figure out math on that. However that works for Prometheans. Yeah, so you can figure that out for the next session. But we yeah, will. One of, your, uh, one of your visions is not going to work, whether it be your uh, X-ray or your uh, heat sensor, whichever mm -hmm. one. Okay. It is gone. So is your eye. Womp womp. So you guys have two new friends that have just arrived at the Arachi facility. What does everyone else in the bar do? As you see, the, sc the scrying window is still large enough for you to just see these two comically fall out of a mop closet. You know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know what you're doing. What is Kilowatt doing? Trying to figure out why people aren't diving through this open hole back into the bar. <laughs> like, come on, people! <laughs> Wait, what? Why are, how, why are you at the bar why now? Are going <laughs> the other way. <laughs> why are we going that way? I'm following the kid. I can't see. Ah! <laughs> like I imagine that Essie's like so discombobulated that with her voice, it kind of has that weird like glitched sort of sound, or like a little like like a tape skip sort of sound with it because she's kind of eye twitch with it. <laughs> Yes, the last couple of years have not been kind. It probably could have been worse. Oh, I can imagine. But Iris seemed to have a pretty good knowledge of what she was doing. Strange, isn't it? Weird. Irene is going to continue holding her ground. Etsy is... Uh, uh, where whichever direction Iris is going at this point, like if Essie is, if Iris is trying to move towards floating mom and Emma Rose, she's at least gonna try and like hold the child in place, knowing how strength rolls can go in this game. But you know, <laughs> not yet noticing uh, any other change other than the body of Irene flying past them. The two abominations will. Uh, the one that was attacking Caro before will attack again. It's a nice, another hook handed deliciousness. Four for your defense. For so who? Caro. Oh. I didn't do it. Oh. That's seven. Seven damage or seven successes? Successes. You need to add stuff to that. Because <laughs> Hook's uh, hands probably don't just do flat damage, huh? So I, do. I was waiting for anything to try to attack people I could see, so can I get a shot on that thing as it's coming at Kara? Yes. As now I have a clear uh, okay, this thing's definitely attacking Kara. Um, so my dex and firearms roll was uh, nine successes. That will, yes, do some damage. What? As your, uh, What? 
how many successes? How many successes? Four, ten, four tens and a nine. So, nine successes, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> six so dice. Like, what? I what? mean, what? I, I, six <laughs> dice. Math checks out. It shouldn't, Math. but it does. It does. <laughs> uh, and because he had the special bullets, it goes right past the armor. So the uh, <coughs> as this hook-handed monster is going for a caro, it is immediately blasted in the side. As chunks of its face rip off. Uh, underneath, you see a half. Uh, almost twig-looking individual mixed with a human. It has the full uh, brunt of the magic bullets to take effect. Uh, it goes down again in a lump of uh, like fizzing black ichor and some flowers. The other one, however, is going to go after Emma Rose, like it was before. Bitch, I'm running. <laughs> you can't catch me. What's Emma Rose's de defense? Twee. It's about to hit me, isn't it? So glad I put fail to protect Emma Rose as my aspiration for this session. Oh, oh that's good. <laughs> that's nice. Uh, that is only three successes. Oh, <clears throat> oh. Do you have any armor? I don't think you do. Fight me, bitch. So as you're running away, this hook catches you in the back. Uh, you only take two lethal. Only. However, however, this entity spends some of its fuel source. with the extra successes. Come again? And increases its size. Sure. It's fine. From a five to a seven. Emma Rose. Yes, I'm. It's your turn. Okay. Um, I know he like hooked me, but am, am I stuck or can I keep moving? No, you just got a huge gash that released a lot of blood that was soaked up into the into the hook, like sure. a sponge. Yummy, delicious. Um, is the broom closet that Essie and Iris fell out of ahead of me or behind me? It is behind you. It is between Caro and James. I, I trust Essie to keep Iris safe for the time being. It's fine. <laughs> I love that thumbs up right there great uh so she's gonna keep moving towards nadia and she's still hovering off the ground right yeah okay does she more or less lucid yes she is yeah she succeeded in her last control oh. okay um so she's gonna finish running down the hallway corridor corridor mm -hmm. you would be able to get to her by yeah by this round Okay. 
Um, can I do anything else? Or is that like, is that it? Just me getting to her? Are you going to do what you said you wanted to do? Mm-hmm. Okay. You can do that. <laughs> I know I can. <laughs> However, I need you to make a... Oh, what is this going to be? <laughs> She's not exactly on the ground. I got, I got decks. I got hops. Give me, I want strength and athletics. Oh Lord, I don't got that. <laughs> or if you have dex and athletics. I have athletics. I don't, I mean, I have dex. I don't, I don't have athletics. So I have one, but not both. One or the other. Uh, two successes. All right, so you're able to to vertical leap off the ground and kind of, you know, essentially wrap around her like a spider monkey. Yep. And she wants to wrap her in her like baby blanket, and hopefully maybe get her to the ground. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, even with the additional weight that you put on her. Those tendrils that are stuck into the wall stay firm. Mm -hmm. I know what I must do. Irene. Mm -hmm. It is your turn. Uh, I am holding action until I see James do something. And then I will probably have to shoot him. But <laughs> he's going to have to... Uh, Give me the moral high ground first. Then it is the daughter's turn. Emma Rose's daughter. Mm-hmm. 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 So she feels the warmth of this blanket as you wrap it around her. Oh. Anki, is all of this going on while all of this is going on? Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I assume it's probably actually faster since it's just bargaining but yeah true that was close what was your defense again? Emma Rose three trace So you see the warmth, uh, you know, you see her face regain some color as it, you know, it goes flush with, you know, the remembrance of the blanket and of the, the hug, the embrace. Uh, she is able to keep control slightly. She's not going to murder you, but her body rebels and produces more tentacles beat at your face okay you only get to take one bashing ah. only, only one of them beat you <laughs> Bet. i only get hit with one tentacle wonderful yes so is that bruised aggravated lethal bashing yeah. bruised oh uh, yeah so if you already took two lethal you would be at Levels two one bashing. Yeah, two lethal one bashing. Cool. Caro. Can Caro see that she just got hit with a tentacle? Oh yeah. I mean these are these are fairly large. I mean she also got hooked by something, so she's she's yeah. she's uh, she's fine. The more immediate danger seems to be her own daughter. And I am compelled to keep you alive. So I must attack the tentacles coming out of your daughter. Uh, 
So what Kara will be doing is taking that sword and slashing at the tentacles that are currently in the wall. Okay. Do they have a defense? They have a defense of zero. When, when you get closer, and Emeros, you would have noticed this also, they're not tentacles in the sense that you would see on an octopus or a squid. They are very... Uh, the abyss tentacle. Very fluid, very liquid. So with four like successes... Yellow. Ooh. With four successes, Caro goes over, starts slashing at these jello-esque tentacles, yelling, how dare you? <laughs> I don't... So, <laughs> Emma doesn't know if you're yelling at her or the tentacles. <laughs> or the tentacles. Running off. <laughs> so you're able to cut down a couple of them. With uh, a total of nine damage. Yeah, you can cut down yeah. probably a good quadrant of them. Uh, and you see that both of them uh, in their embrace swing to the opposite side a little bit as the tentacles give way that you would slash at. Anki, please share your internal monologue. The whole thing? With, uh, yeah, uh, okay. Whatever you want to share with everyone. I've made contact with Geneva, or whatever you're calling it, your game. Made a bargain. These poor, simple-minded humans will never help awaken the sleepers, which is eventually what the ultimate goal of Geneva is. Only a mage can take Geneva where she needs to go to have the minds powerful enough to awaken sleeping entities. Minds that are more than human. In the twilight, or in the abyss, Maybe even the Exarchs. I'll be her herald. I will take the contagion out of this world and into the others. One condition. She gives me the power to help drive off Amorosa's keeper so that she can be safe with her daughter. So none of none of you hear this. And I've showed her many examples of how Orochi only wants to contain, not spread her flesh. Sarah takes all this, and you can tell somehow she is relaying it. A couple of moments go by, and she answers you if this is true and what you say and what you have shown is compelling a bargain can be reached however for there to be for this unilateral understanding to take place you must close off the gate that is feeding this world. Agreed. You will find it in the bowels of this facility. It is what mother had given to those who had asked for it. And it is a direct link to home. She shows you a mental picture of it. It looks like the gravity drive from Event Horizon. I love it. <laughs> Where it is just that giant circular black, you know, unknownness. Agreed. But I'll need to borrow some of that power now to get there. Not all of it, just so. Well, the bargain has been struck. 
and the plan laid out. But it's eight o'clock. And we have to stop here. But next week, it will be the finale. And all kinds of craziness is going to be going down. Will Anki be able to hold true to his oath? Will Mare get her eye back? <laughs> Will Emma Rose finally save her daughter from what is going on here and from those who would take her from her? Take her from her. Take her from her. Will Irene find her humanity in stopping another Promethean from finding theirs? All these questions and more hopefully will be answered. Oh yeah, I'm skipping Carol and Kilowatt. I, I didn't think of any cool thing cool for you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I felt left out, guys. <laughs> will Caro indulge in ice cream right yeah all these answers and more will be found out in the finale next friday will kilowatt be iris's true hero <laughs> superhero yes, hero. <laughs> yes. There, we go. there you go but yes we will cut it off here everyone and again my something's wrong with this i think a storm's rolling in and i can't get any of my computer to work so Right after this, we will be starting our 48-hour video game marathon. So make sure that you guys stick around. And my computer broke. I think. You can still hear you. Keep going. You can going. still hear me? Yeah, okay. I can still see you. I, can't, see you. <laughs> I can't see any of you, and I can't hear myself in my microphone. Hello. You're still going. You're, You're, good. Good. You're good. Awesome. Going. Uh, I'm not going to give the schedule because I can't see it. And I usually get it wrong even when I'm reading it. Oh, it's frozen now. So make sure. We can still hear you. Keep going. Keep going. You're just making so, it a Wayne face. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. No. No. Oh, nope. Now he's going. Nope. Oh. Okay. No. Yeah, we get it back. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Yay. Wow. What a roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. My computer just threw up on me. <laughs> like a whole bunch of stuff opened and closed all at the same time. Okay, but yes, make sure you guys go to VorpalTales.com to check out our calendar as many changes will be coming here in the next couple weeks. A lot of awesome stuff. Uh, some things that have ended that we will visit again yet in the future. My talkie bits at Darn you, computer. But before we go, I have to tell you about something else. Tabletop titties. Tabletop Titties is a queer and feminist TTRPG podcast, a streaming group that run entirely by people of marginalized genders. Make sure you check out their second season of their D&D show, Into the Revelia, as their, as their heroes from season one take on Hit Point Press's hilarious horror carnival, Ekna. Make sure you watch it every Tuesday at twitch.tv slash tabletop titties, 7 p.m. Pacific time, and their edited podcast form every Friday. Their second show, Titties by Night, is a Vampire the Masquerade V5 show starring a cadre of supernatural investigators as they solve mysteries in Victorian London. Catch all that vampiric action on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. on their Twitch and in podcast form on Saturdays. Check out all their information by visiting their website, tabletoptitties.com. And remember, every time we say titties, it's with double D's. Again, check out our website, vorpaltales.com to see our calendar, social media links, recaps, and links to all of our partners and affiliates. Check them out, purchase awesome stuff, and support our show all in the same process, because we love you. Players, let the audience know the next time that they can catch you and the cool things that you will do outside the show. Hey everybody, my name is Rachel. You can find me still in fires pretty much everywhere. Uh, as for when you will next see me, that will be Sunday running Star and Smoke, a vampire uh, masquerade sub-bot game. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you can also see me here on Tuesdays playing Insurgents. Uh, that is also kind of fun. Uh, Wednesday, I'm playing D&D over at Plastic Age Plays. And Thursday, we are actually off this week uh, because we wrapped up our fifth season. Uh, but Thursdays, I'm running Changeling the Dreaming over at Onyx Path. 
then in the evening, I'm over at my personal Twitch running Midnight Mass Effect. We're almost done with three. It's gonna be great. We'll be fine. <clears throat> I'm Tyler, Elder Jack is online. I'm all over, all over the place at Warped Tales. Uh, this Saturday, Cult One shot at 8 o'clock. A bunch of people from Carrying Comfort. You should come check it out. Uh, Kill them mercilessly. Next week, uh, Session Zero of Wraith the Oblivion. And of course, we start the 48 hour marathon of which Dwayne and I are going to sacrifice our bodies to be here for most of. So that'll be fun. We salute you for it. And then my name is Mayor. Oh, seven friends. Uh, my name is Mayor. You can find me at Oh Hello Mayor here on Twitch and Twitter. Um, tomorrow I stream in the morning starting at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then I'm going to be flowing directly on into the 48 hour survival fest as well, playing my beloved Minecraft as well as uh, getting myself killed. Uh, it playing these other games because it takes me a long time to survive. Uh, and then again on Sunday, I'll be streaming again. And yeah, that's pretty much what you can find me. The best way to find out when I'm streaming, what I'm streaming is Twitter. I have been Caro, the mummy. I'm also Kisama. You can find me on Twitter at True Kisama. You can find me all at various moments during our 48 hours. Uh, and over the course of the week, you can find me on Tuesday in Mage the Awakening. Back here, again, uh, for Contagion. You can find me for Unknown Armies on Sunday, and I believe in Wraith on Saturday. So go check those out. It'll be great. Hey, and I'm Corey, aka Narf, uh, and you can catch me on Unknown Armies on Sundays. Uh, and also, I work on a fun game called Caves of Cud with QUD. Check it out. It's a great roguelike. And hi! Uh, sorry, I was looking at my dog and my cat that are underneath my desk right now being cute. Hi, I'm Savannah. You can find me online at Miss Miss Emo Fox. Um, I will be one of your hosts this weekend for the 48 hour survival stream. Um, as well as you can catch me Sunday uh, in Rachel's uh, vampire game, uh, playing my character uh, Svetlana. Uh, and hopefully, now that I moved, I can actually get uh, my own stream on my own channel up and off the ground. And uh, what do you know? I might be collaborating with uh, Oh Hello Mayor, my cottagecore wifey poo. We might just end up <laughs> cottagecore wives on, on a few little things. Just yeah. many, as many games as we can. <laughs> so, yeah. That's me. Also, for the audience, there'll be about a five minute break between this and the marathon, which means some of these people might still be here. So, if you want to see what happens behind the scenes after a show, hang out. We're not switching suits. Yay. So, aspirations. Did anybody complete an aspiration today? No. I have keep Iris safe. Nothing happened to Iris. Iris technically kept you safe. Mm. But Listen. yes, she is she is safe. <laughs> I cleared also, my long do term. I? So go ahead, sorry. So so sorry. Do I get like the equivalent of like an arcane beat for having gone through something fayish? <laughs> I know that's stupid. a mage thing, but mm, I don't know. It is definitely a new experience. We'll figure that. We can figure that later. Figure that one out. I'll, you I'll say they over. were there for two years? That's plenty of time for Essie to go through. I'm missing an eye. An alchemy, maybe? I probably know some stuff. <laughs> probably know some stuff. Yeah. We'll give you we'll give you some uh some shinies before the final. Yeah, I cleared my long-term aspiration in both of my obsessions today. <laughs> but I'm not adding good ones. Key, Corey, Rachel? Um, mine are all Anki-related, and um, Anki was not with me for me to do anything. So, no. <laughs> but, oh, but, but I think I cleared my long-term because it was just to find my daughter and granddaughter. And I did find my daughter. You did find her. 
I'm pretty. Oh, yeah. Sorry. What are your other aspirations? No uh, stuff. <laughs> uh, well, I think uh, I succeeded at failing to protect Emma Rose. <laughs> she did take damage twice. Yeah. yeah. It'll be a whole moment later. But for now, yay. I discovered more about Arachi while while hurting them, kind of, I guess. Yes, in a yeah, in a roundabout in a, in way, a, yes. In a in a long term aspiration way of hurt Orochi, I believe I made progress. Um yeah. and yeah. Nothing for Irene. What are your aspirations? Uh, I wanted to serve a drink to a stranger at the bar and like have a conversation in which I was comfortable. I wanted to protect uh, James and my long-term aspiration is to find out more about the woman that she used to be. Hmm, okay. I might, I might have to give you James. Because James, you, you protected James up until the point that he attacked you. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> James was always going to be bad, no matter what happened to him. <laughs> okay. Since we have met the end, uh, let's do votes. Yay, votes. Same order as always. just threw yourself <laughs> through the ringer protecting this kid. It was fun to watch. Thank you. <laughs> Tyler. I know. Mm. <laughs> oh, did you just say no? I thought he said no. We're just like, Tyler, no. No. <laughs> No one gets my vote this week. <laughs> I'm going to give it to Kilowatt, who's just like, why is any of this shit happening? Mm -hmm. The whole time, and acted accordingly. Um, I, uh, I have to give mine to Irene, for sure. Um, for just Promethean's gotta do what a Promethean's gotta do. Even if a Promethean bad guy, you know, they're still people. So, I preach. Big preach. Even though they're bad guy, doesn't make them a bad guy. Right. It's, isn't that from Wreck-It Ralph? No. Oh, there was something from Wreck-It Ralph kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Ah, I vote. On the one hand, I feel like I gotta give it to Emma Rose for not doing my one job as the mummy that I set out to do in session one, but I gotta give it to Kilowatt for just taking no one's shit. Just why is any of this happening? And why? Then also, <laughs> why are we just saving my the shit? <laughs> All the shotgun. <laughs> What's going on? I was in my room on the computer. And then all this stuff happened. Um, my... Nope. Wait, am I next? Who's next? Well, go ahead. Nope. D or uh, do you want time? No, that's fine. I can go. Uh, so, uh, I'm gonna send mine over to Irene. Uh, the, uh, the protecting James, uh, scenario was really awesome. I really enjoyed it. In the middle of all that craziness to be like, come on, don't go bad on me, please. Yeah. <laughs> just dawned on me that everyone except me protected someone in this session. 
<laughs> this is I true. don't know if you would consider what <laughs> I am currently doing protecting, but I mean, it's something. You have sacrificed your body for someone else. Mm. Yeah. That is protecting or masochism. Or both. Or, or both. both. Um, okay, my vote goes to Essie um, for full-heartedly um, following Emma Rose's instructions um, and being a truly good person. Because you are people. Awesome. Awesome being awesome to... Uh, sorry, I had to answer chat real quick. Awesome being, <laughs> awesome being awesome to each other. Uh, but we are going to head out for this evening and hopefully finish everything up next week. Remember, it will be the finality. Finality. Not the finality, but the finale of the Contagion Chronicle Season 2. And maybe a Season 3 will be in the works. Who knows? Guess you guys will just have to check it out. Remember, next week, Friday, 5 p.m. We will bid you all adieu. Yes. <laughs> so we, will, we will again pierce the veil and look down the corridor offices of the contagion <laughs> to see where they lead us. <laughs> Until then, we bid you all adieu and we hope to see you again. Good night, everybody.